trucks. They take control of our mind, body and soul. Once you are hooked onto them, you are hooked forever. There's no turning back. Four lives, four addicts, four failures. Despite their longing for better lives, they could not resist the temptations of their addictions. Watching these addicts lose control, we witness the dirtiest, ugliest portions of the world they live in. My name is Celestine, and this is my film analysis of Requiem for a Dream. This film revolves around the lives of Harry, played by Jared Leto, his mother, Sarah, played by Ellen Burstyn, his girlfriend, Marion, played by Jennifer Connelly, and his drug dealer friend, Tyrone, played by Marlon Wins. As a result of their addictions, their lives undergo disastrous consequences and took a downward spiral. Requiem for a Dream is the second full-length feature by Darren Aronofsky and has developed a cult following ever since its release in the year 2000. It is currently ranked 79 on IMDb's top 250 films list. It is apparent that this film is a critical success and many have claimed it to be a pivotal part of the industry. There are many factors that ultimately contribute to the film. I'll be talking mainly about the editing and the mise-en-scene. Before I begin, I have to impose a spoiler alert and will urge all to watch the film before watching this analysis. Aronofsky and editor Jay Rabinowitz uses many unconventional editing techniques to bring the viewer closer into the reality of an addict. One such technique is the use of the split screen. In the beginning of the film, an argument between Harry and his mother occurs. This technique used allows the viewer to absorb more of what is happening in this scene. The split screen also serves as a visual metaphor of their broken relationship and leaves viewers with a dreadful sense of uneasiness. Later in the film, this technique is used again when Harry and Marion are lying on the floor. Initially, viewers are made to think that they are close to one another and that there is intimacy between them. However, viewers will realize that this closeness is false once the split becomes obvious. They are actually further away from each other and this split on the screen shows how the addiction to drugs made them feel isolated and lonely. Most films average around 600 to 700 cuts. However, Requiem for a Dream made use of over 2,000 cuts. Aronofsky uses a lot of rapid and stylistic jump cuts which are called hip-hop montages. Whenever a character undergoes their addictions, a series of extreme close-up shots of the drugs, blood cells rushing through the body, dilated pupils are shown on screen. This highlights the frantic emotions these characters have and their dependency on the drugs. In one scene, where Sarah is eating breakfast, the food disappears before the viewer's eyes without her actually touching the food. This shows that she is losing track of time due to her pills. The film also increases speed and scenes shorten as it progresses. Such rhythmic and elliptical editing techniques used in the film emphasizes what is being experienced by the characters as well as the changes to their world and their mental state as they spiral deeper into their addictions. Aronofsky wanted Requiem for a Dream to be an urban horror film. To achieve this effect, Aronofsky created a disorienting atmosphere in the film. He chose a dark urban setting with dim lighting similar to that of a crime scene. Additionally, he uses muted colours. The colour palette almost made Requiem his second black and white film after Pi. He only uses vibrant colours when depicting a character's hopes and dreams. For example, Sarah lives in a muted green apartment with old furniture lying around. Whenever she pulls out her red dress, it contrasts with her surroundings and signifies her television dream. Tyrone is also wearing blue clothes in his flashback of him and his mother when he was younger. To him, she is his literal dream. Aronofsky pays a lot of attention to details and it is obvious in the characters on screen. He asks both male leads to avoid sex and sugar for a period of 30 days in order for them to achieve a better portrayal of their character's desperation. The characters also undergo massive physical changes due to their health deteriorating from the vicious cycle of their unhealthy addictions. One obvious example is how the hole on Harry's arm worsens as the film progresses. By the end, the characters no longer look like how they were initially with most of them being robbed of their youthfulness and gain severe weight loss. Speaking of the ending, Requiem for a Dream is cited to have one of the most depressing endings. Harry's arm is amputated, Sarah lives in a dream world, Marion humiliates herself just for money, 
and Tyrone is in prison, reflecting about his past. All of their lives have crumbled. In all of their last scenes, they turn onto the right side and pull their knees up to their stomach. Trying to seek comfort, they all lie down in the same fetal position, the position that the fetus is in during the last two trimesters of pregnancy. This symbolizes the character's helplessness as if they were an unborn baby. Requiem for a Dream is a powerful film. However, it is not an easy film to watch. Complex even ranked it 9 among the 50 most disturbing films of all time. But Requiem for a Dream is an important film as it talks about real life social issues and serves as a warning about the dangers of drug addiction or for that matter any type of addiction. Requiem for a Dream is definitely one of Darren Aronofsky's best work and one of the reasons why he is considered to be one of the greatest directors of all time.